Welcome to the WWE Podcast, your number one source for the latest in WWE news and straightforward analysis. Are you ready to get this thing going? Give me a hell yeah! I said give me a hell yeah! Then let's get this show started right now. All right, everybody. It's time to hear from you. It's time to hear what you guys have been thinking about all week. It's time to hear about your opinions, your questions, your rants. It's the mailbag version of the WWE podcast. So let's not waste any time. Let's jump into the very first one. And this actually is from Patreon. So if you are on Patreon, I will prioritize your questions on the show uh, because you are a patron of the show. You have support me. I'm going to support you. So this is from Uncle Chris, the Uncle Chris podcast. He says uh, he's got a few thoughts for me here. Number one, a faction with Asuka, Shinsuke, and the voice of them should be someone new. But I see Heyman here as well. So first point, yeah, I, I don't. I think Asuka and Shinsuke would be a nice pairing, but the problem is there's no intergender wrestling. I don't know how they would support one another in a male female world in a very, I guess, segregated male female division, and they they very rarely mix the two. And you have Reginald, who is just the uh, basically the punching bag for the women on the roster who is, I don't know. I don't know what his role is other than just looking like a a fool every week and getting batted around by Sasha Banks. Uh, I don't, I don't understand that, but your point about Shinsuke and Asuka. Yeah. They're both of Japanese descent. We understand that It, it would be intriguing on paper. I just don't know in execution if it would really amount to anything. Uh, the voice for someone would be Heyman. Yeah, I, I have no problem with Paul Heyman really doing anything. Paul Heyman could be a commentator. Paul Heyman could be a manager. He could be an advocate. He could be a travel chief um, uh, assistant. He can be whatever he wants to be. Paul Heyman's that good. Uh, but I don't know if I don't know if that he would. I don't know if WWE would see the value in that using Paul Heyman there. Plus, he's with Ro- Roman Reigns right now. He's the counsel to the travel chief, as I should should have said. But. Um, yeah, I, don't, I, I like your idea, though. Uh, I miss the really good non-title feuds uh, in, in WWE at all in WWE, not NXT. But the Orton versus The Fiend is one good storyline without a title involved. The WWE would give me the feeling it's only important when it's about the title. But should a great talent also not be in good non-title stories? I'm all for not always involving the championship. I don't think the championship always needs to be involved. Personal issues also sell. Now, if you're going to ask me which is more important, personal feuds or championships, I would say championships every day of the week because championships are why we are supposed to believe that the talent is there competing, not performing, but effing competing. They need to change their linguistics here. That's the problem, I think, a lot of times in WWE that they, they like to say performers. Instead of wrestlers, they like this. They use performing instead of wrestling or competing. Can they just say the word competing competition more? I think that would be helpful. But yeah, I, I don't think that programs all, always need to have a championship, but they also don't always need to have a personal side to it. Um, but more often than not, we see title matches that have personal programs built in. So. They do combine them at times. Uh, You say that, finally, an established star could also bring new talent on screen without putting them instantly in a title match where they could fall very fast. Yeah, I totally agree. I I agree, Chris. I mean, I don't know what to say. (laughs) Uh, Thank you for being a patron of the show, and uh, you get number one, the number one response here. So, okay, let's move on to our other emails that we got throughout the week here. This one is from Petra, and... uh, she says, hi, Matt, it's Petra. Sorry if this email has things that don't make sense. It's a little past midnight, so I'm a bit tired, but I just want to talk about the only way I think Roman Reigns could lose to Edge. Okay, well, first of all, I'm extremely tired too. So if my response to you doesn't make sense, then I guess both of our questions and answers won't make sense, which I guess would make sense considering that they both don't. See, now I just didn't make sense at all there. <laughs> okay. Oh, God. Um, I'm going to keep this short and simple. I think the only possible way is a false finish DQ or something like that because Roman 
is the kind of heel you can't touch. You can't give him a loss unless it's a fair finish or a DQ. And I feel like if they have him lose, they better have a plan or Edge better be doing something way bigger than Roman could do, which at this time seems impossible. Also, real quick, wanted to talk about Apollo's heel turn. I really love it. I think this is the role for him. Thanks. Bye. Yeah. Last point. First, absent freaking lootly for Apollo Crews. This couldn't, he's been more relevant in one week than in five years. I mean, that's just a fact. We learned more about him in 10 minutes than we did in five years. So that's a good thing. I like that Apollo Crews is getting the attention he finally deserves. Uh, so with Roman Reigns, the way he loses and, and, and how it's going to happen to Edge, or rather rather how it could happen because of Edge, like you said, a false, a false finish or DQ. The problem I have with that, though, is it's going to be WrestleMania. When, when it's WrestleMania, I don't want any screwy finishes. The time for screwy finishes is over. The time for straight-up wins and losses is now. I don't need all of the pomp and circumstance of screwy count-out finishes. I mean, that, save that for your SmackDowns and B pay-per-views. You don't do that stuff at WrestleMania, so I'm hoping they don't go that road. But Roman is the kind of untouchable heel right now that no one can beat him or should beat him straight out. And I have my struggles with Edge beating Roman Reigns point-blank. No hocus-pocus, straight-out beat him uh, man-to-man. I have my problems with that. The, the question, the ultimate question... For WWE going into WrestleMania is, is this. Do you value the feel-good story, the retribution story, not the group, but the actual retribution of the man, Edge, Adam Copeland, over the brilliance and progressive heel that Roman Reigns has become? The guy that has carried WWE on his back has been the best, easily the best storyline in WWE in the last six months. Do you value Edge's feel-good story over Roman Reigns' brilliance? They're going to have to answer that. That's not an easy question to answer. I have my answer. I would keep Roman champion. And there are rumblings of Edge turning heel. I want to see a heel Edge. I think heel Edge is awesome. I think heel Edge is, in some ways, more entertaining than babyface Edge. So we uh, hopefully do get a heel edge. Do I want it now? No, I don't think we've had time to really embrace him, especially in person. We haven't had time to really show our love, support um, outside of the Rumble and, uh, you know, a couple of months before WrestleMania last year, which the pandemic hit and then the world got turned upside down. So the fans haven't had a lot of physical in-person embrace with him, which is, it's tough. It's tough on everybody, you know, but especially with Edge and his return. Uh, But that's the question they're going to have to answer. There's no question. It, it's not easy. That's a tough question to answer, and there's really arguments on both sides of the coin. Okay, this one's from Chris. He says, I've been thinking about this for a while. If Edge sta- if Edge ends up winning the title at WrestleMania against Roman, who do you think will be his first program? I was thinking it may be Seth uh, Rollins, because if you remember back in 2014, Edge and Christian made an appearance on Raw and did an episode of Peep Show, and on that show he attacked Christian, and then Big Show put on uh, put then Big Show put Edge's neck close to the Money in the Bank briefcase and forced John Cena to bring the authority back. And if he didn't, he was going to bring break Edge's neck. I can see them bringing that up in the rivalry, and this is uh, and this can be how Edge gets his revenge on Seth. I would like to hear what you think. Thanks. I'm glad you brought up the neck breaking incident. I remember that. I can't. Is that really back in 2014? There's no way. I'm gonna have to look at that. If it is, I feel like I'm in some kind of time capsule. It feels like a few years ago, not seven. Woof. If you're, you're probably right, you're probably right, and I'm wrong. But it just feels like it's not that long ago. But I, I know exactly what segment you're talking about. It was it was where we, we were thinking. Oh man, I wish Edge could be just Edge, right? And, and kick some ass. And I do remember that, and that's what forced him to bring the authority back. I think the authority was gone for like a, maybe three weeks, four weeks most. But they could use that. They'd be stupid not to use that. So while I just talked about Edge turning heel and why I would love to see it, that means I would. I don't want to see it now. I just want to see it during his run, however long this lasts, one, two, three years on a very part-time basis. I would love to see a heel Edge. But... There's a lot of heels that he, as a 
big baby face can work with, and Seth is certainly that one that he could work with. Um, he has mentioned, Adam Copeland Edge has mentioned before he returned and made that triumphant return at Ro- the Royal Rumble in 2020 that he wanted to work with guys like Seth Rollins, like Finn Balor, right? He mentioned Seth Rollins by name. So I don't see Seth Rollins turning babyface and Edge turning heel. I think that's very unlikely. I think you keep an, a babyface Edge. He's probably going to win at WrestleMania. You would think he's going to win at WrestleMania. Although, I mean, we still have five weeks, six weeks of TV. It's not, uh, it's not in, you know, impossible that he wins. I think it's likely. I'm, I'm trying to think of WWE logic. WWE logic is different than just the everyday common man logic, for better or worse. And I'm trying to think in their minds, what would be the better story in their minds? And it's probably Edge. I disagree. But they probably don't, and they feel like Edge has a lot of guys he could work with as, as a babyface going against heels, and I agree. So I'm all for it. I do remember that segment. Uh, so kudos to you for remembering it. So uh, thank you so much, Chris, for your your email and your suggestion. Okay, Paul. Okay, wow, you got quite the email today. So let's jump in and, and uh, just do it. Okay, you say... Hope all's well. Just finished listening to your raw podcast over a few sessions, and I have a few thoughts as we race towards Fastlane. I like that pun. And we're going to race towards Fastlane. Uh, Lashley at last. Finally, Bobby Lashley gets his rewards. If you told me that it would take 17 years to get his first world title 17 years ago, I think you were you would be out of your mind. Winning over the Miz was not a great accomplishment in terms of opponents, but at the end of the show, Lashley seemed genuinely happy. Unfortunately, no fans were there to celebrate his success. Uh, I realized that not all fans love Lashley, but w- finally winning the title would have been, or made rather, the most hardened anti-Lashley fans stand and cheer. I hope he has a bit of a run with the title after 17 years. He deserves this moment. Even if Brock Lesnar comes back for WrestleMania and takes on Lashley, a match that so many have clamored for, Lashley will prevail. I seriously doubt that Lesnar wants to come back full-time, and therefore there's no reason for Brock to win. Bobby can defeat Brock and slay the beast. Finally, I do not want to have a part-time champion again or ever. Well, I think you just kind of made your argument, right? Just because Brock Lesnar would come back and win the championship doesn't mean he would work full time. Look what he did with the universal championship on raw. He was an absentee champion. So uh, winning the championship for Brock does not mean he's there on a weekly basis or even a monthly basis for that matter. Okay. You continue to say last year will be a full-time champion. And there are so many possibilities for him. I think Drew will be Lashley's opponent at WrestleMania. I agree with you. So let me just say that. Uh, I agree that I think Drew will be Lashley's opponent. I think Brock Lesnar is an outside chance. I think Brock does happen, but not WrestleMania. Um, I think Drew and Lashley is where they're, where they're aiming. This will be a big-time match, and it would be entertaining to see who the WWE chooses to go over. I hope it would be Lashley. Even though I like Drew and the way that he has fought and how he has really been the face of Raw through the pandemic. Drew does deserve the cheers from the fans when they return, but the story comes first. Right now, in my thinking, Lashley is driving the plot forward, and the other wrestlers are co-stars in his championship run. Yes, as it should be, as it should be for all, all top champions. That's the way it should be. And I think fans, if if they're there on at WrestleMania in person, are going to have a hard time going all out for for uh, cheering for Bob or for um for Drew because it's different with Lashley's champion people have waited for that it's overdue he's earned the respect of every fan that's ever watched i think how can you not respect Bobby Lashley you can't you can't not respect him so that's a double negative which means you have to respect him <laughs> i think fans have had the the time to see Drew as champion. Yes, we haven't been in person to celebrate with him. We will eventually get that moment again. I, I have no doubt. But if given the choice between Drew winning again at WrestleMania and Lashley retaining, I think most fans would go with Lashley, Lashley retaining. You know also why? Because Lashley's not a heel. You don't have that. I mean, maybe they make him more of, of, a, of a D-bag over the next five weeks towards Drew or low blows or, or cheap shots or whatever, but I've seen zero of that from Lashley. So why are we supposed to dislike him? Just because the announcers say so and because they pump in booze? I'm not falling for it. I hope you guys don't either. So um, that's not no slight on Drew. I'm a big Drew McIntyre fan, but I'm saying given the two choices, I think fans are smart enough to see what's going on. 
Okay, I agree with you that Lashley winning is in dominant uh, style, such dominant style is fine. Not all heels have to cheat. I like that Lashley gave the Miz the hurt lock after his victory. Yes, I did not talk about that. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, it was a final message to the Miz that his shenanigans and trying to avoid him was a huge mistake, that, and then he had to pay. It was a huge message to all the locker room who were outside the ring for the most part that this version of Lashley is the best version and nothing can stop him. And Lashley is possibly the best dressed wrestler. The man knows how to wear a suit. Second place is Seth Rollins. Yeah, there's a lot of suits going on. I agree. A lot, a lot of, a lot of suits. A lot of suits for heels. I guess I don't know what it is about suits and heels and why it's supposed to be a, a heel uh, attire. But yeah, uh, I like how you met, uh, mentioned though that the hurt lock was applied several times. It wasn't just after he won he let go. He just demolished the Miz. I I thought it was great. I hate everything about the Miz. Everything. Everything. There's nothing. Not one quality about the Miz. I mean, he's good on the mic, but I don't. I'm not even going to get into it. You guys know where I'm headed with that. I'll just say the same thing I've been saying. Uh, he is everything wrong with wrestling. I'll leave it at that. At least the eye rolling part, the channel changing part. Okay. Elias and Damian Priest match. No flow. At times they seem confused as to what they were supposed to be doing. Elias is still going nowhere, though I do mind. I do find him amusing at times. If Elias is going nowhere then his quasi-partner Jackson Riker is stalled permanently. Even though I had never heard of Bad Bunny before this, I thought he had a good performance on Saturday Night Live, and I've downloaded his music, and it's pretty good. But holding him the 20, to the with the 24-7 belt is beyond silly. Well, you have to also have to remember, the 24-7 belt, by definition, is silly. It's, it's a joke. Uh, it's not even entertaining anymore in my mind. It's the same five guys headed by Akira Tozawa, single file running after whoever's champion, except when Bad Bunny is because because he's Bad Bunny and they don't touch celebrities because there's like a no touch rule. There's like no touchbacks <laughs> uh, with celebrities. I've despised it since I've watched wrestling when they bring in celebrities because uh, they they always put the the ego of the celebrities above the uh, the the. the the day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month, year-to-year performers, and I've always been a big anti-proponent of that. Uh, but uh, that's good for you. I mean, if you watch Saturday Night Live, I have no, zero, like less than zero interest in Bad Bunny on all levels, not just WWE, which is a flat-out embarrassment, and I can't see it. I cannot stand him on my screen every week. I just It makes me cringe. But also on any other level. His music doesn't interest me. Saturday Night Live, that's wonderful. I don't watch Saturday Night Live. Um, if you do, that's cool. I've you know I did hear about good things too with Saturday Night Live and if you download his music again, cool. It's everybody's got their own things that they like. Not me. Uh, not just this is not my thing. That's all. It's just a very subjective topic. Okay, a uh, few more points here. The women's division on Raw is muddled, and I'm being kind with that description. I see that. Yes, uh, Charlotte and Oscar will meet at uh, WrestleMania. I don't see any other match. Rhea Ripley will be champion one day. Hopefully not 17 years, but I would like to see Asuka get retribution at WrestleMania for Charlotte breaking her streak. Asuka, like Drew, did very good work when they were at the Performance Center, and she deserves better booking. I was not a big fan of Shayna Baszler losing to Charlotte on Raw. Ever since losing to Becky, her booking has been uneven at best. She went from unbeatable and looking like a destructive force at the Elimination Chamber to looking above average. I'm not sure why she's being booked this way. Maybe it's her look or her work on the mic which is not bad, it's just average. Or maybe she's still transitioning to the WWE style of wrestling. Whatever way, I hope she gets back to fighting solo and going for the title. I Yep, I mean, I said this too on Raw last night, um, that Shayna Baszler belongs solo. I don't care what Nia Jax does. She can go just... I, I mean, I really don't. I have zero interest in Nia Jax uh, on any level at all, too. She just has... I, I mean, she's limited in the ring because of her size. Um, she just is. I'm not a fan of her style of wrestling. It's not a, it's not a knock on her. Again, all subjective, folks. Uh, I'm, I'm not a fan of her on Twitter. I'm not a fan of her on, on really any level. I'm just not a fan of Nia Jax. Maybe she can just take a, have a part-time job of, uh, of, of you know, rolling the dice or throwing a dart at a dartboard and, and putting a bunch of pictures up. And whoever she hits with the dart, she, she'll injure that night. I don't know. She maybe she, she could maybe find a... A hole to hurt, whatever. I mean, all right, uh, uh, enough of that. But Shayna Baszler, yes, Shayna Baszler is somebody that 
when she took over the Elimination Chamber last year looked like a damn buzzsaw. That's the Shayna Baszler I want. I want the Shayna Baszler that breaks arms. Not the Shayna Baszler that's a tag team. Uh, And I know what they're doing with the tag belts. I respect it. But it's time to move on and make Shayna what she is at her core. And that's a single performer, a solo performer, just kicking ass and breaking arms. That's the Shayna Baszler I want. So... That I mean, and so again, why you're seeing her just look above average is because she's part of a tag team. You don't do that to solo stars that you're trying to elevate, but a tag team you can absorb it. That's what they're doing. So she's defined down by being in part of a tag team, according to WWE. Braun Strowman and Shane McMahon at Mania don't care about this at all, but better than teaming with a ten year old. Oh, <laughs> well. That's setting the bar pretty damn low, but I, I'd agree. Uh, Braun Strowman needs to find a faction, I think. His solo work is um, middling at best, and having him as a giant in a faction could get him back on track. Or team up with Damian Priest and then have them fight for the tag titles. It gives Strowman some needed direction and Priest a quick boost. Not a great pairing, but I'm just throwing that out. Yeah, it, it could. Again, I don't want Bad Bunny having any more protection than he needs. I literally want to see somebody throw him off the top of Hell in a Cell, or maybe the WrestleMania sign. That I would get out of my seat and pop for. Okay, I don't. I don't want Bad Bunny having any more protection, being a loud mouth, and then hiding behind the big man uh, because he knows he can. That's again, that's not babyface at all. But they're trying to tell us it is because he's a, he's a, he's a he's a celebrity. We all have to cheer for celebrities. Celebrities are by default uh, baby faces. It's it's BS. It's crap. Is what it is. Uh, but agreed about Braun Strowman. I don't know if he's again teaming with the Big Show or um, Big Show. Uh, Damian Priest, where the hell I get Big Show? Why am I thinking of Big Show? I think it's from the previous questions. Uh, fine. Uh, the, the 10-year-old was a joke, too. But here's what I would like Braun Strowman to do. A couple of things. I have nothing against Braun Strowman. He's very good in the ring for his size. He's leaned down. He's a legit badass dude. No questions. He is, he's got all the credentials. He's got all the makeup. But maybe he could tone down the, the, the super tight shirts um, and perhaps stop complaining about everything. Everything out of his mouth is complaining. Everything out of his mouth is, you know, just yelling at people. Everything out of his mouth is, I don't trust you. You're trying to screw me. Everything out of his mouth is just whining in a monster way. I'm tired of it. I feel nothing for his character because it's not relatable. I don't know. I, I I'm not saying... Braun Strowman should go away. I like the character. He's intriguing on TV. He's a big dude, and he's he's absolutely an asset to the roster. I just don't like this version of Braun Strowman of just whining all the time and, and having to put the mic to his mouth and, and, and do his scary monster voice. That's what he does. He, he, he just has figured out a way to be the scariest monster he can be. So, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, your final point. Seth Rollins and Cesaro. Seth says to Cesaro something like, we've known each other for a long time and have have a history. Have I missed something? What history? That seems forced at best. Cesaro and Rollins would be a great match. I just don't see how this enhances Cesaro in the short run. I want to see Cesaro get that final push for the title as he is legit. Cesaro must be looking at Bobby Lashley and wondering if he'll have to wait 17 years to get a world championship. I hope not, as his fans know he deserves better. That's all for now. Sorry for the length again. Be well and stay safe, Paul. Okay, thank you, Paul. You are by far, in a way, the winner of of this week's longest email. So congratulations to that. We should all say, stand and applaud. Uh, but really, I mean, I know it takes a lot of time to make these emails, so I, I want to make sure I do you justice and uh, read it out here on the show. Uh, yeah, but again, it's your point with Seth Rollins and Cesaro. Um, I don't know what history they're talking about either. I mean, I know they've wrestled each other a lot over the years. That's true. So maybe that's the history. It's like the general foggy history. But there's, you're right. There's no one definitive story that we all go, ah, that's what he's talking about. We're all just like, eh, yeah, probably, you know, <laughs> like we all just kind of go with it because we know that there's, there is probably a lot of times that they've wrestled. There are. But can anybody name one? <laughs> no. But we all generally accept it as true that they have. They have a history just by generally wrestling each other over the last 10 years. Because it's it's true. I'm sure they have. But there's no, again, there's no defined story or moment 
that these two have had. Maybe they'll draw it up. Maybe they'll, they'll pull it from the archives of their library and we'll go, oh, that's right. They did this or this. Probably, I hope. Or they'll just ignore it, which they probably will. They'll probably just ignore it. That, I mean, that, yeah, I'm with you. The history thing, I'm like, I'm trying to rack my brain like, what? what? <laughs> I don't know. You're right. Uh, but, yeah, Cesaro does deserve a championship. I just don't know with uh, Roman Reigns doing such an excellent job as champion if that's in the cards in the near future. I know I said a while ago that we should all get excited for Cesaro, but after the way he was booked at um, Elimination Chamber and subsequent to that, we kind of know that he's in a program with Rollins for quite some time, probably through WrestleMania. Okay, Paul, thank you for that. Let's see if we have any other emails. I think we might. Okay, yes, we do. A couple. Okay, this is from Terry. These are these are shorter guys, <laughs> uh, so don't worry. Terry from Springfield, Tennessee, again. Just wanted to say I enjoy your podcast. I listen to them all, and finally, Bobby Lashley is WWE champion. That was in your rock voice. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to do my impression of The Rock voice. It'll just be flat out embarrassing. You could probably do a better job than me. But pretend The Rock said that. Finally. Bobby Lashley. Yeah. Okay. There you go. We all know the rest. Uh, that that definitely was a feel-good moment for me. That's when you wish there was a live crowd there for that moment. I jumped out of my seat. Yes. So many moments over the last nearly year have felt like they need a, a crowd. And March 16th, last year, 316. Um, was the first episode of Raw that was not with the crowd, which was bizarre with Austin coming out and stunning. Uh, I don't know. I think he stunned uh, Byron Saxton and somebody else. It was weird. Um, it needed a crowd, certainly. Uh, I, I'm a you know big proponent of obviously having crowds there. It, it, you realize how badly you need them when they're not there. So unlike the rest of you who benefited from probably seeing it live, I tried to stay the hell off social media. Because I knew that championship match was happening that night. I try to stay off. And then I get like notifications from Twitter, Facebook. And I'm like, damn it. I didn't turn off. To, and all of a sudden I see Lashley's champion. Blah. I'm like, I could not avoid it. I couldn't even turn on my phone. I wasn't even in social media apps. And everything's just flying at me that Bobby Lashley is WWE champion. So it did spoil it for me big time. I mean, I, I, I was surprised when I saw the news. I, I did say out loud, what? But it wasn't a shock to me. Because, unfortunately, my phone has ruined my life when it comes to seeing wrestling, uh, or re- surprising me with wrestling. I, I Maybe I should just start watching the damn thing live. The problem is I don't have um, any live TV apps. I don't have cable. I use Hulu to watch what I need to watch. So there is that downside. But, um, all right. Let's continue on. Thank you so much. How many emails we got left? Two, two emails left, and then we'll see what other places we got to go. Okay, Gustavo, he says, hey, Matt, I sent an email a few weeks ago and forgot to mention I'm from Lake Forest, California. Cool. Where is Lake Forest? I'm too lazy. I'm on, like, flat out. I'm too lazy to Google it right now, even though it takes, like, five clicks or less than that, like one click. <laughs> Just like, type it in. Um, let me know where, where Lake Forest is. Like, L.A., Sacramento. I'm going by the big landmarks. Uh With that out of the way, I have a suggestion for the Wrestling Nostalgia podcast. I think you should talk about the main event finish of Survivor Series 1997, the Montreal Screwjob. I'm curious as to your thoughts on this event as it basically kicked off the Attitude Era. On a side note, I also have a question regarding this year's WrestleMania. No one's really talking about this guy, but we all know he is still looming out there. What What do you think WWE will do with Goldberg? I know he has one more match on his contract this year, and I'm almost positive he'll be at Mania. I really, really hope the plan isn't to put him on the main event with Lashley and Drew. That would be a terrible main event. Thanks, Gus. Uh, Gus, you almost had a good email. <laughs> Damn you. Um, okay, first things first with the Montreal screw job. I, You're right, I've never covered it. And the reason I've never covered it is not because I don't care about it or recognize its significance. I just don't cover it because it's been covered a gazillion times. So many times. I mean, to the to at nauseum. However, I've never discussed it. So for whatever the hell my opinion's worth to you guys, I will have no problem covering it. Um, I'll make a note. I know that I have also have people asking me to do 1980s wrestling. You guys are, uh, you're over, um, not overloading me, but you are giving me good suggestions. And I, I want to make sure that I, that I do them. So how about this? All right, I'm writing it down now. You can hear my pen. Uh, I'm going to be doing Survivor Series 1997 next week. Survivor Series 97. There. 
heard it. I'm going to be doing it next week because I think it is – it's something that we've all heard. We all know the full story. We've heard so many different versions of it. We've seen sit-downs with Bret Hart. We've seen, sit, seen sit-downs with Shawn Michaels. We know about the, uh, the, the burying, the hatchet moments that eventually led to – Bret Hart versus Vince McMahon at WrestleMania, putting Vince in the sharpshooter. I mean, we, we, we've seen it all, right? Like, we've seen it from beginning to end and uh, backwards, you know, all of that. But I'm fine with it. You know what? I'll, I'll cover it here because in 600 and some episodes, 650 plus episodes, we haven't ever talked about it. So good, good call. Your suggestion about Goldberg. That's why I said your email was almost good. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Please. You're right. Goldberg probably does have one more match, at least one more match on his contract this year. People don't understand. Uh, Goldberg has a multi-year contract with WWE. So when we all think Goldberg is just going to go away, uh, we might want to think again. And why Goldberg is just incessantly in or, or just habitually in, better word, championship matches every time he comes back for a match is just plain stupid unless he's going to be a heel. And you could easily play that character. My God, Goldberg could be a really good heel. Because he's genuinely disliked by a lot of fans. Lots. Uh, especially with the resentment they have towards him taking a spot that could be used for an up-and-coming talent. Uh, but Goldberg, I don't want him. I could, could I see, Here's the thing. I could see Goldberg in the, tr- in the match with Lashley and Drew. Again, if that's the match. <laughs> There's a lot of ifs here. But I could see WWE doing that. I'm not a fan of any kind of multi-person match other than one-on-one at WrestleMania for championships. But I don't think WWE cares, right? Like, they did a, a the first ever women's, first ever, was a triple threat, sadly. I'll never get over that. It should have been Ronda and, and uh, Becky, period. But I, I, will, I seriously will never get over it. I know it's been two years. Uh, I'm just going to ignore your question, Gus, because I really don't want to, I don't want to even, like, consider that. Uh, Goldberg and nobody. I mean, can, can we just, I'll, I'll be okay with a video package. I mean, or bring out Gilberg. But uh, please, no. <laughs> okay. All righty. Here we go. This is from usually a caller. This is from Mr. Casual Wrestling Fan. He says, hey, Matt, I decided to email this week since last week I had bad quality on my voicemail. Uh, yeah, that's right. You did. I, I totally forgot. And I was I was, uh, I was, was a bit disappointed only because it's really fun to hear from you. But emailing, you can't go wrong. Can't, can't have bad quality email. Everything I, that I wanted to happen this week did. Bobby Lashley took the WWE Championship, which I predicted. And I hate to say it, but the antics that The Miz used was great. I was yelling at the TV for Bobby to chase The Miz down as the ref was counting to 10. I'm so glad they didn't drag this out until Fastlane. Uh, so that first point, yeah, you you win on your prediction. No question. Uh, I, again, I'm surprised that they would even, in the first instance put the championship match at the nine o'clock hour. Like that's a bit disrespectful to the, to the WWE championship. The only, again, the only way logically that you would put the championship match at the nine o'clock hour is if it's a, if you know that this is going to get dragged out, which there's no way that Adam Pierce knew this was going to get dragged out to the 11 o'clock hour to make it the main event. So it had to go the hard way to the main event, but why wouldn't you automatically make it the main event? You could have done all, all those skits in one segment in one match. I mean, you could have just made the main event 20 minutes, go through all that stuff, but they had to drag it through the show. Uh, But I, you know, I'm surprised they didn't, didn't do it at fast lane. I'm also kind of sad that Bobby, Bobby Lashley didn't get to celebrate on a bigger stage on, at least on a pay-per-view. That's the one thing I have. And that's, I'm not, I'm not really angry about it, but if, if I was to design this in a perfect world, Bobby Lashley would have held this up at WrestleMania. I mean, I'd like him to have that moment, but and he might still do it, but not the first time anymore because that's over. Next, I predict WrestleMania, the WrestleMania main event will be Bobby versus Drew, as many of us do. Yes, yes, I agree. I think that's likely. Um, the Miz was the ultimate transitional champion. Yeah, he really was. You talk about that is he is the definition of a transitional champion. No question. Um, okay, you go on to say Drew had become boring as champ, in my opinion. Drew fought hard through the Elimination Chamber. Then Bobby comes out and beats oh, on a weakened Drew. Then The Miz, as the resident cockroach, cashes in the Money in the Bank and takes the championship. Drew doesn't look weak at all. He looks strong. Bobby Lashley looks strong, and The Miz looks like The Miz. So it seems to me that Bobby and Drew are going to have a program together. Yes. Please. I think, I think that could be a really good program. But here's your, my question to you, Mr. Casual Wrestling Fan. 
your your prediction is I think it's got good merits. I think you you've got a lot of legs to stand on with that prediction. Uh do you think or actually not I guess maybe it's a twofold question. Do you think Bobby Lashley will, will retain at WrestleMania if it's Bobby versus Drew? And do you want Bobby to retain at WrestleMania? I think I know the answer to that, given that you said Drew is boring as champion. So, Okay, uh, keep going here. A couple more points. With Drew and Sheamus, I guess, done with their program. Braun not in a program. Uh, I don't count Shane O'Mac. AJ is not in a program. Keith Lee can't stay healthy. Jeff Hardy is a mid-card jobber. Randy is in a program with The Fiend. Who do you think will face Bobby at Fastlane? Hopefully not a Miz rematch, but I think Bobby needs to defend the championship to keep this momentum going. Why do you have to do that, man? You really got a cap, caps lock, momentum. Uh, you really, you guys know how to just kind of stick the knife into my skin, don't you? <laughs> SOB, SOB. Um, but here's what I think is going to happen at Fastlane. Number one, there's not going to be any titles at Fastlane. Title changes. If anything, even if they're not going to have a title match at Fastlane, maybe make a number one contender to WrestleMania. So if you're not going to have Bobby Lashley in the match and have him just kind of sit this pay-per-view out, you could have Drew, Sheamus, Miz, and Wrestler X, could be Keith Lee, in a fatal four-way elimination match. Winner faces Bobby Lashley at WrestleMania. That's, I think, doable. I think that's probably how you get there. Because why are we even going to waste our time with having a championship match at Fastlane knowing that the championship's not going to change hands. So that's how I think Fastlane will work itself out. I don't think Bobby needs to ch- uh, to defend it at Fastlane. Um, but you can have him involved in some physical capacity, just not in the match to defend the championship. Last point. It seems Raw has an upper card babyface issue. AJ heel, Sheamus heel, Bobby supposed to be heel. Yeah, supposed to be. That's true. Uh, Miz heel, Braun heel, or tweener. Yeah, Braun is weird. Uh, <laughs> Drew is a face. Where are all the baby faces at? Drew, Jeff Hardy is not an upper card uh, guy. Kofi's in a tag team. Keith Lee's a mid card. Riddle's a mid carder. That's all I got for this week. Thank you, Miss Casual Wrestling fan. Good point. Uh, they are sorely missing top baby faces. Sorely. You could say Edge, but Edge is now on SmackDown. And Edge is part time at best. So does that mean we get a possible heel to face turn AJ Styles perhaps kind of reinvigorate his career I think there's room for that AJ Styles for all of his talents and all of his uh his, his comedy ability which he does actually have some and Omas who is just an absolute mountain of a man and has added some kind of depth to his character they have not really done Jack blank you know what with him at all and it's this kind of sad, especially given, like you said, where the hell are the baby faces, man? There's barely, I mean, yes, here's the thing. There are guys that are cast as baby faces, but they don't feel like baby faces. Like you said, Braun technically is a baby face. I know he, but the problem is, like you said, he's, he feels like a tweener, right? Bobby's supposed to be heel, but he feels kind of like a tweener. Because why are we hating on on Bobby? I've been down that road a hundred times. <laughs> what's the what's the uh, unredeemable quality that we're supposed to dislike about Bobby Lashley again? I- exactly. Somebody pointed out to me because uh, we're all we're, because what WWE pumps in booze. Yeah, l- let's try again. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. There's a lot here that's missing. They're, they've got a big big spot to fill or spots to fill for baby faces and perhaps. AJ Styles, I think, could be one that fills that spot. Somebody's got to turn back to face. Or they got to do a big trade from SmackDown. Or they just call it from NXT. There's no other options. Thank you, Mr. Casual Wrestling Fan. Good email. And hopefully your audio quality improves so you can call back next week. Okay, uh, let's take a, a little bit of a, sh- a shift to a different platform here and get to your voices. Let's get to your voices. So let's start out with, I believe, this is Jeff from the Philippines. Hey, Matt. This is Jeff from the Philippines. So now that Bobby Lashley is the WWE champion, I think it would be really cool if they have Kid Lee join the Hurt Business. Because I think 
with all the how he was booked in the past months with all this overly protected uh, you know when he lose a match you know it's gotta be he was hit with a low blow or it was a two-on-one handicap match and for me it was like they were trying to over push him with uh, trying not to make him lose in clean in those matches and uh, right now I think Vince doesn't know what to do with him with all these un- inconsistencies with his appearance he didn't appear in the Royal Rumble and uh, they said he was injured at the elimination chamber so he couldn't participate in the Triple Threat United States Championship match and uh, it was never said what his injury was so so I think right now it would be really cool if he returns and joins the Hurt Business go for a mid-card championship the United States Championship because I think that's where he belongs right now he's just a month he's just staying here in the main roster for months and he it doesn't really establish him as a main event uh, player yet uh. so that's what I think about uh, what they should do with him and what do you think about Raw not really advertising much about what's going to happen in the upcoming episode you know when you watch Raw for three hours it's just like more of impromptu matches uh, just like they're just trying to fill up the time but when you watch NXT, AEW or Impact they're trying to advertise what will happen in next week's episodes so you have that you're going to anticipate you're going to wait you're excited to watch because you're you know what's coming for next week's episode so you're gonna wait for that you are gonna feel excited but when it comes to raw they don't do that much it's like everything's impromptu matches that's all Matt stay safe bye hey Jeff thanks for your thoughts Uh, Keith Lee is is uh, an anomaly right now he you know I, I think there's more to the story than we know as fans I don't believe it's always injury uh, there's been a lot of times over the last couple of months that Keith Lee was advertised for something and just didn't show. And they blamed it on injury. I have my doubts. I think COVID might have been part of it. I think maybe personal issues, maybe issues with WWE management, creative. There's something deeper than what we know of just, oh, it's just injury. It's very convenient, right? It's very convenient that it's always injury. I doubt it. I doubt that it's injury. I think it's deeper than that. Um, Keith Lee even tweeted out, at, at one point, I think a week or two ago, he just tweeted out hard times. So take that for what you will about, you know, people talking about conspiracy theories and speculating as to why Keith Lee has been kind of just MIA lately. But him joining the Hurt Business, yeah, I think that's – look, if Keith Lee can actually stay healthy, if that's the actual reason, or he can resolve whatever issues he's got going on – Keith Lee could do that. Now, some people may say, ah, he's a single star. What are, you, what are you doing? Yeah, he is. But imagine him joining forces with, with Bobby Lashley. That is certainly possible. I don't think WWE is going to do it because they view Keith Lee as, as a single star only. But I wouldn't mind it. And it would, it would, I think, help Keith Lee not hide, but to kind of, kind of be on camera be there, but maybe not in a significant role at this point. It's not all about him. It would give him time to grow. I don't know. It's a thought. I, I don't mind. I don't, I don't dislike it. I really don't. I think it's, it's possible, but I don't think it's likely given how WWE views Keith Lee, you know, if he ever comes back on a consistent basis, as far as how WWE advertises raw the following weeks, here's why I don't think they do that. And I'm being forthright with this. Because they don't even know what's going to be on next week. It's not that they don't want to. They just don't know. And I have no problem with spontaneity. I have no problem with things happening on the fly. 
I have no problem with matches just happening. That's fine. I, you know, as it should. I don't need a structured this, 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 this happens. No. Things are going to come up while conflicts happen on the show. And you, as Kurt Angle said incessantly when he was Raw GM, you settle them in the ring. Which I wasn't a fan of when he said that because it was just kind of a, I don't know. But that's that's fine. But I agree that they don't advertise it because you know why? They don't know what the hell is going to happen on the show. You hear How many times have we heard over the years of Raw being, the script being written up hours before the show, Vince McMahon making last minute changes. You think they're going to, going to want to advertise a week out about what their potential matches are the following week? I mean, outside of a main event like the WWE Championship, you're not changing that. But you're not going to advertise something that perhaps Vince is going to change his mind on an hour before the show. So that's what I think it is. It's their own, Vince's own uh, creative brain that kind of goes here, there, everywhere and decides to, you know, get hot on something, cold on something. This is my shiny new toy. That's not. That's just how Vince's brain works. So that's, that's I think, the reason why. And you would say, well, you know, what about the rest of the show as well? NXT is run by Triple H. Raw is three hours, too. So there's a lot more time to fill. So the, it's a different animal. Raw is a whole new different animal. So, okay, let's continue on to our next voicemail, which, by the way, guys, you want to call in? 518-952-0247. You can also email us at realwwepodcast at gmail.com. You can also email us a voicemail. Super easy to do. You create a voice memo and then just send it via email to realwwpodcast at gmail.com. Okay, let's get to that next voicemail. Hey, it's Kyle from Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, I wanted to talk about what happened last night on SmackDown with uh, you know, Bianca Valley choosing Sasha, and that was going to be, a, you know, it's going to be a great match and should be the main event probably at night one at WrestleMania. Um, and then it was, and also talk about this whole Sasha stuff about should be should should, should be a heel or not. And look, if she ends up being a heel, I'll be okay with it. I don't really care what she is. Um, I, you know, I don't really pay attention to. You know, heal her face. I mean, I, I get it. It's supposed to, why should I care about expression and stuff like that? I get that, but I kind of don't care. I think this match itself is going to be great. I'm a, fan, I'm a fan of both women, so I'm looking forward to it. And like I said, should be the main event. Um, and I just think, you know, it's, I guess that my question is, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think Bianca's going to win a championship? And if she does, do you think that will, will turn Sasha heel? finally and make people happy and then they'll move on and stop complaining about Sasha Bakes about being so unnatural and stuff like that. So what do you think about that when if Bianca and make Sasha turn heel, if that's possible. Um, but thanks for our call. Bye. Kyle, our resident Sasha Banks admirer and apologist. <laughs> I, I'm not, I mean that as a compliment. I mean, I think 90s, it's got to be high 90s percent that when you call in, it's it's about Sasha Banks. Um, but look, I'm glad you, I'm glad you like her character so much. You don't care if she's a baby face or heel. That's how you know you truly are attached to the character. That's good. That's cool. And I'm glad you, I'm glad you enjoy her. Uh, I do too. I'm a big, big Sasha Banks fan. If you watch the Broken Skull sessions that she did with Stone Cold, it is even more revealing about her past, about how she came up with the boss, about how she nearly got fired from WWE. She nearly got cut. A great story. I'm a big Sasha Banks supporter. I just think she's miscast as a babyface, which, again, I know that we are probably seeing the transition to a heel. Uh, she just says things that babyfaces don't say. That doesn't mean I don't like Sasha Banks. She's a great performer, one of the best of all time, certainly. But I think Bianca Belair will probably beat her at WrestleMania. They've done a lot of legwork, a lot of foundation laying for for Bianca Belair with all the interviews they've done with her. Uh, her winning the Royal Rumble, obviously. Uh, all these things that they've done for Bianca Belair. And they didn't they even do it like a 24-7 on her or like some kind of special on the network for her? They've really done a lot, which they've also done a lot with John Cena, by the way. Side note, they've done a lot with John Cena. So be careful of that. When they start to tell you best of and somebody comes out of the woodwork, like, why am I seeing the best of John Cena or Brock Lesnar? Just keep on the lookout. I think it's... Might be a sign of things to come. Just a thought. I could be totally wrong. But anyway, back to Sasha Banks. I think Bianca Belair will beat her at WrestleMania. It could be the main event of night one. It's deserving of the main event of night one, especially if Bianca Belair is going to be crowned the new champion. Um, you could have, here's what I think is going to happen. Early prediction. I know there were five, five and a half weeks out. It's going to be a great match between these two women. Big fans of both. I think Bianca Belair wins. 
Sasha Banks is going to pretend to be happy for her and hug her and and, uh, embrace, and then she flattens her. That's my thought. Or they go with the traditional, this is Bianca's time, let's give her the moment and not sour it with a heel turn. Or they just do the heel turn before, and no one's surprised when um, Sasha Banks is a poor sport. I don't know. But to me, heels and faces are important. But if you love a character so much that you don't care which one they are, that's rare. But evil, good and evil is the best story ever told in all of mankind. Whether it's movies, TVs, books, doesn't matter. But uh, thank you, Kyle, for your voicemail. And uh, I look forward to hearing more about Sasha Banks in next week's voicemail from you. So, okay, keep things rolling. Hey, Matt, it's Kyle from New York. Um, so when you play this mail, this voicemail on the mail, next Mailbag episode, it's going to be after the SmackDown episode that Bianca Belair chose Sasha Banks. So we already know she chose Sasha Banks. But first off, let me just say, like I said a few weeks ago on one of your Mailbag episodes, like you now know that I am a huge Sasha Banks fan. She is my favorite female wrestler. It's like ever, like out of any company, WWE, AEW, New Japan, anywhere, any of any wrestling company, Sasha Banks is my favorite female, female wrestler. She always has been since I became a fan. And, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought for a sec. Um, yeah, she has been my favorite since I became a fan. And, and so, you know, I'm a big fan of her. And I even told, I know, I know, I even said on the show that I had a crush on her. I've always, I always had a crush on her since I've seen her too. But, um, anyway. So that's beside the point. Um, even though I like her a lot, and I know you don't right now, I do agree with everything you say about her. Like, she's not cast as a baby face. I mean, I mean not my bad. She's cast as a baby face, but she's still a heel. Like, I, I get what you say. I, I understand everything you say, and I agree with everything you say. She really is acting like she's a heel. She really is not a baby face. And I also agree with you that she's a much better heel than a baby face. Much better. Like I still don't mind her as a baby face, but I definitely prefer her as a heel. A heel. I would prefer her as a heel any time. She is definitely more more of a fun heel and a better heel. I agree with you on that. And my point is, my my question is, since I'm since I'm talking about this, do you think she's going to turn on? Do you going to have a full real heel turn on Bianca Belair? Like I know I know like I just said, we me and you and um, some other people probably on the podcast already. Like, already think that she is a heel, basically. Like, she's acting like a heel still. What I'm saying is, well, there be, do, you, do you think there'll be a big turn for WrestleMania? Like, you think, I mean, she'll, like, she'll, she'll, she'll give Bianca Belair a really, really brutal beatdown. Kind of like when Bailey turned on Sasha and, like, beat her a beatdown. Do you think Sasha's gonna have a beatdown like that at Bianca Belair? That's what I'm trying to say. Like, do you think, go, do you think she's going to have a full heel turn on Bianca Belair? Then going into WrestleMania, the heel versus face, so it'll make the match more interesting. Because Bianca Belair will be the babyface champion, I mean, uh, challenger, and Sasha will be the, you know, the heel champion. Do you think that's going to happen? Like a full heel turn. A heel heel turn, I guess. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's all for this week, and, uh, yeah, thanks. All right, I swear that you, both of you Kyles, both, both Kyle squared, you guys... You you called each other or left voicemails within minutes of one another, and you have the same topic. So it, I, I don't know what it is. Uh, it just maybe is coincidence, but uh, I promise I didn't actually design these emails or the, the voicemails this way. I just play them as I got them. So, uh, Kyle, thank you again, as always, for calling in. I guess I answered your question in the previous Kyle's question about Sasha Banks. Uh, I It's a little bit different of a question, though. Good question. I do think Sasha Banks has a full heel turn. And I think if WWE has two brain cells to rub together from a creative perspective, that they would be understanding what Sasha Banks has said the last few weeks is not likable. It's a heel promo. I'm the women's division revolves around me. I'm number one, which makes you number two. The way she says every, the way she delivers everything, even as a baby face, the way her, her just promo mannerisms her promo delivery has always been obnoxious to me and and i'm not saying in a bad way like ms heel heat channel changing embarrassing no 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 i mean in just a way that even when she's playing babyface the heel shines through she's a wolf in sheep's clothing i mean that again all as a compliment i have nothing against sasha banks both of you kyles think that i you know i i want it, i want her gone or i think she's you know not one of the top 
wrestlers in WWE. No, I'm a big Sasha Banks fan. I am also a big fan of casting people correctly. I know that's if you love a, a performer so much that you don't care which way they cast their cast. I do. Okay. I care because it makes me care about good versus evil. As human beings, we naturally gravitate usually. Okay. Not all of us usually gravitate towards wanting to see good defeat evil. It's that simple. It's good guys versus bad guys. I know Vince would say that's antiquated. No, it's not. How you deliver that uh, to the fans, maybe the vehicle in which you deliver it is different. Maybe the faces change. Maybe the characters alter or, or, or modified. But the, the premise is still the same. The foundation of what makes wrestling great, any again, TV, movies, books, what makes any of that great is good versus evil. It will never change. Never. It will never be antiquated. I don't care how long wrestling exists for or how long TV and movies exist for, which will probably be for like the rest of time. It will always be good versus evil. And I, again, kind of circling back, I'm going to make this all make sense. I care about who is casted how because it makes me invested or not invested in a story. So again, Sasha Banks, to answer your question long-winded, does do a full heel turn. She should. She's already shown signs of it. I hope those were signs anyway. Again, I hope she, they didn't look at that and go, that's a great baby face promo, Sasha. You're going to kill it. I hope that they made purposefully, there's the key word. I hope WWE Creative purposefully planted those seeds the last couple of weeks to show us that she's turning heel. Okay. But uh, I, does, I do think she's going to do a full heel turn. If you're going to ask when... I would think that it could be before WrestleMania. So like you said, it's a more interesting dynamic of face versus heel. It's clear cut. However, I could also see scenario two, as I mentioned with the previous Kyle, that it's perceived that Sasha's the edgy baby face. That's kind of turning heel and Bianca's just the flat out baby face. And then again, you get that fake uh, kind of admirational hug between the two at the end of the match. And then Sasha flattens her. And leaves her laying in the ring. And there's immediate heel heat on Sasha. Fully turning heel. Either way, once WrestleMania 37 is concluded, whether it's before Mania or after that match is over, she's fully turning heel. I will be shocked if they don't. And it is a dumb move if they don't. It's just it's it's just dumb. <laughs> and from my perspective, it is. Um, again, big Sasha Banks fan, though. I am. Okay. Let's keep things rolling. Hey, Matt, this is DJ Kuzmo back at it again on your mailbag show. I'm recording this on Tuesday night. This is the Tuesday night after Monday Night Raw. And all I can say is, and the new WWE champion, Bobby Lashley. Man, oh, man, 16 years in the making. I can't believe it. You know, it's been a long time coming from Bobby Lashley. I've been a fan of his since he first debuted in 2005. But man, oh man, this was the moment. This was the time for the almighty to claim his first ever WWE title. And moments like this as a wrestling fan, I don't know about you, but moments like this, you're talking about wrestling moments. And I wish that there was a live audience out there on Monday Night Raw to witness this. Man, oh, man, moments like this, man, like when Eddie Guerrero won his WWE title at No Ways Out, you know, moments like that, it just, it's just, so, it's just a good feeling. Whatever else happens down the line at Fastlane or WrestleMania, I don't care right now. Because all I'm, all I'm just so happy right now is that Bobby Lashley is finally champion. The Hurt Business is a well-oiled machine. Everybody's got titles. MVP is the MVP. Thank, to, thank goodness for MVP being partnered up with, you know, the whole Hurt Business crew. And I, I just want to hope that this that this keeps going, you know, that the Hurt Business keeps winning, that Bobby Lashley holds on to that title, hopefully until WrestleMania, even if longer. But, man, oh, man, that's how sweet it is. 16 years. That's all I got to say, man. I'm just so happy right now. Bobby Lashley is champion, and I'll talk to you next time. So I'm, I'm confused. Are, are you, DJ, are you excited? Are you, are you kind of down on Bobby Lashley being champion? I'm, 
I'm not really sure. You, you need to clarify. I'm kind of, I don't know. That, that was a really foggy answer to me. <laughs> so, oh God, you know, that, that's, you, you just cut a promo, my friend. You just cut a promo on the show. Uh, that's passion guys. That's passion. Uh, that's how I think most fans feel. Yeah, I really do. I believe that most fans are excited that Bobby Lashley is champion. I I think it is it's shaken the world the the WWE championship up the the wrestling world up a little bit. Uh, Drew was great as champion. Miz was a joke and uh, and in, in the definition of a transitional champion. And I, I wouldn't even I, to me Miz isn't even worth a transitional role. I'm serious. I, I don't even want Miz as a transition. I just want Miz. Just as nothing, like I just I want him as a, a manager. I think Miz would be a great manager, but Bobby Lashley, yes, this is this is the Almighty's time. I hope they don't do something stupid and cut it short, though. Uh, I know you don't care right now, and you're just kind of on cloud nine. But we do have to look forward. I mean, it's Mania season. We're not in you know like we're not in TLC season or Backlash or some kind of weird in between time where Lashley's probably going to hold it for a while. Mania is a time to make changes, but I don't know why we'd make a change right now. Uh, I'm, I'm again beating the Miz on Raw in a lumberjack match isn't exactly something to write home about, even if it is for the WWE Championship. I think most fans want that definitive, defined win against a top guy like Drew McIntyre. Uh, that's I think what most fans would want. I think Bobby Lashley is a babyface right now. I, I think, I, again, I don't see a reason to cheer uh, to boo him. Give me a reason out there. I said that earlier in the show. Somebody please provide me with a, an actual thought out, just intelligent answer to me as to why I'm supposed to dislike Bobby Lashley. Please explain this to me. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Uh, is it because he has doesn't have eyebrows or that he's not great on promo? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I do not. There's nothing about me that hates Bobby Lashley. The guy is a jacked, respected, uh, just underutilized, overdue performer, wrestler that should have gotten this many years ago, and he has finally become champion. I think we can all say, oh, hell yeah, to that. I'm with you, DJ. I I appreciate your enthusiasm, and uh, as always, I will talk to you next time. So, all right. This is our final voicemail of the evening, and... Let's get this one. I believe this one's from Australia, so let's take a listen. Hey, Matt, it's Bevan from Australia. Um, hope you guys are all doing well over there. Um, two questions today. Uh, I just wanted to ask, does anyone else find it really distracting when Roman Reigns, Paul Heyman, and Jay Uso come out to cut a promo? You've got Roman Reigns, who's standing tall and strong and in the background, you've got Jay Uso pumping himself up, you know, saying you can see in his in his um you know in his in his enunciation you can see he's going you know let's go Uso and he's pumping himself up and he's clapping his hands and he's, you know curling his arms so to speak. I find that really distracting. It's not like he's like I can understand if he's coming out to a match and he's pumping himself up, but you're coming out to a promo where your head of the table is going to be talking and then you jumping around in the background like a Jack Russell, I just find it really distracting and I kind of want to punch him myself when he does that. Anyway, I just thought, is it just me or does anyone else find that distracting? Um, on the second point, I really enjoyed, I think it was seven minutes of, of um, seeing the Miz getting absolutely pummeled by Bobby Lashley. That was awesome. The minute the... Um, the um, Lumberjacks came out. I knew it was all over for the Miz. So that was great. Um, my question is, is Bobby Lashley going to be a heel or a face? Because he's brutal in the ring, but he doesn't really do anything underhanded. Not that a heel has to do things underhanded to, to win. I understand that. But I'm just wondering how do you think he's going to be booked? Um, you might have covered this in your raw review because um, I haven't really been able to watch. I mean, sorry to listen to it all, but yeah, just wondering on that as well. Thanks, my friends. Have a good day. Bye. Hey, Devin. Thank you for calling in. Very, very good to hear from you. You always seem to be the last, uh, the, the last voicemail. I, I guess maybe you you call in 
the, uh, at the very end of, of the show, uh, or at least as I start to record this, it seems as if you're, you're always the last one. That's not a bad thing. I think it, it's a good way to end the show. But your question about, Bobby, well, number one, the Bobby Lashley deal, how they're going to be booking him. Uh, I mean, I did talk about this throughout the entire show a little bit, but to, to put a bow on it and be concise about it, I think Bobby Lashley will be booked as a heel, but we won't have any reason to believe he's actually a heel. And I don't want to see WWE giving this tweener crap about, well, it does, you don't need to have somebody be defined good or defined bad. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. If you don't, you're just being a lazy booker or you're too damn scared or cowardly to go all out with one or the other. There are, there's good and bad in, in everybody. And we can see that's why there's face turns and there's heel turns. Somebody sees the light or they go to the darkness and then they come back again. That's good and bad lives inside all of us. So I don't want to hear Though that, oh, it's a tweeter. They're, they're, you know, it's gray. There's gray or bull, you know, you know what? I almost cussed there. BS. So I believe they'll book him as a baby, a heel, but they're not going to do anything to make us hate him. Bobby Lashley hasn't run down the fans. He, again, he doesn't cheat to win. He does exactly what he says he's going to do. Beating down the Miz isn't exactly a, a heel move. I think fans loved it, but. I think fans are going to also have a hard time choosing who they're going to cheer for between Drew McIntyre and Bobby Lashley. If that's indeed the main event of WrestleMania 37 for the WWE championship, I think they're going to keep him heel. I think he should be babyface. Just go with it. But, uh, that, I mean, that's just my guess. They are short on top baby faces though. So I don't know. There, there's an argument to be made for, uh, for bringing Bobby Lashley into the light. Um, MVP could play both roles. He's the mouthpiece for Bobby Lashley. So, uh, as far as your 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 little tick that you've noticed with Jey Uso clapping and saying "Let's go, Us," Jey Uso is yeah, at times he overacts. Uh, now that you've mentioned it, I won't be able to unsee it. So thank you for that. I, I I've noticed it, but I guess my brain just dismissed it. Your brain did not, and now my brain is tuned into this, and I will never be able to focus again. So and everyone listening to this, <laughs> thank you so much, Devin, for that. Now we we will never be able to to be focused on Roman's promo again. But I agree. Yeah, it, it's not a big rant thing. I, I don't hate it now that you mention it. But it does distract the eye from what we should be watching if it's Roman Reigns. Maybe the camera angle, maybe the camera can pan in a little bit further on Roman so we can stop watching Jey Uso clap his hands. You know, I'm fine with that. But, uh, yeah, perhaps you could tone it down. So now, see, what you've done now, <laughs> Devin, is you've planted this seed in my brain that will eventually kind of grow and sprout into this like mega rant next week about how I noticed this <laughs> and I've been loving everything Roman Reigns has done. And now you are slowly starting to tear this down from a production standpoint. <laughs> um, but uh, thank you so much for your call. And I hope to talk to you next week. All righty. Well, guys, that is it for the mailbag for this week. Um, as we get closer to WrestleMania, I assume that our volume will go up in terms of emails, voicemails, whatever, you can email us at realwwpodcast at gmail.com. We're on Instagram at WWE underscore podcast. We are also on Twitter at wrestling underscore audio. For those of you that want to converse with me on Twitter. Yeah, I used to have a ton of followers. <laughs> like I had 45,000. Twitter banned me for stupid reasons that I still don't know. So I'm slowly trying to crawl back into the game and hiding out. I'm, I'm like, I've got Harry Potter's cloak on me. I'm kind of darting through the woods hoping that the, the Twitter police don't find me and go, ha, he's back, right? And they just ban me again. <laughs> so please keep my secret. Uh, I'm begging you. And uh, by the way, follow us not just on Twitter and Instagram, but uh, also subscribe to us. That really does help us out. Um, follow Zach Smith, who does his own wrestling random wrestling podcast on any podcast platform you can find. Why do you want to do this? Well, he puts his NXT review there, but also t uh, other wrestling content that you don't hear on this network. So search out random wrestling and hit that subscribe button. Zach Smith does a great job of covering other topics other than just NXT. Um, so that's it for me tonight, guys. Thank you for listening. And as always, I'll talk to you next time.